Well, we got in uh, a new cylinder today. And so I'm going to show you what you do when you buy a brand new cylinder. The process you need to go through for you guys in automotive, you just don't open it up and use it. You actually have to, for one, take the nitrogen out of it. And now most of them will become with nitrogen in them. So just they'll have a pressure coming out. There have been some manufacturers been trying to go to vacuum and that's like the worst thing you can do to a cylinder is ship one under vacuum because if there is a slight leak or sometimes you'll find the handles have been hit and opened up a little bit and this might have not been screwed so you come to a system that it sucked all the air in and now it has it's really has a lot of moisture content so I'll hook up the line here and unfortunately I wanted to put my micron meter here and show you guys how fast this could draw down but unfortunately my uh, micron gauge field piece is on one unit uh, drawing down vacuum and my uh, AccuTools micron gauge is on another system on a vacuum pump overnight so I have no more micron meters to put on other than this unit has a micron meter in it. So hook up your tank and I'm trying to do this one handed and it doesn't want to be nice to me while I'm right here holding a camera. It's not lining up one handed. Let's turn up there. There we go. Get that on there. open all the way that's closed and we'll kind of see how fast it starts. two minutes and three seconds into the video and it will take a little while make sure I'm tight right, you can see a little bit of smoke coming out of there and what that is is that's actually oil vapor uh, from the nitrogen going through to the pump and you're supposed to have the ballast on. I didn't have the ballast open. It's not really that important because my oil is clean inside there. I don't have to worry about getting any moisture out of there. This doesn't have any moisture. It just has a minimum moisture from the day it was manufactured. And then they purge it with nitrogen. They fill it up with nitrogen. And there I'm already down. So I could close this. Boom. There we go. And as you can see, the whole volume of that tank has already gone down low enough that the micron meter can start reading vacuum, you know, a deep vacuum inside here. It's higher in here, so if it says 800 here, it might be 1800 inside here. But as you see, the volume of this tank takes no time at all to bring down from atmosphere down low. And if you notice, Compared to a working system or like when I'm on one of the cars You see how fast it's going down In comparison because there was never any refrigerant in here. There was never any oil in here So there's no refrigerant boiling out of oil and there's no Moisture boiling out of the surface. I'm able to hit such a low level so fast so rapidly and so that is as you can see we're going to be going below 100 microns really fast focus so it was two minutes and uh, three seconds and now we're four minutes and three seconds and two minutes down to 120 microns all right so that'll be it and so what i'll do is i'll just leave this on overnight and by tomorrow this will be probably below 30 microns 15 microns or so and then I'll get a tank of which one am I using this on this is going to recover this isn't for dirty refrigerant this is being for clean refrigerant in a known good system that I have to service I'm going to reservice the like the recent Goodman I was just on uh, I have a clean out filter on there and I have a section line filter on there that after roughly 40 hours or so I'll be going back and recovering out the refrigerant so I could take those filters off. Uh, I'm also removing a filter 
that's in the unit. I hate the filters that come on the cheap units that is put inside the unit. So I'm just gonna remove that. And um, so I'm removing the charge and I need a pure clean new tank to do that. So I have a few tanks, but they're being used with other refrigerants for the other two jobs I'm having. Uh, I'm doing the same thing on my clean recovery refrigerant tanks. Uh, I recovered the refrigerant out of the systems. They're under vacuum and the refrigerant from that unit I took it out is going to go back in and it goes back in through a filter. It doesn't come directly out of the tank because you can have small settlement from the grinding and welding process on the steel. So there's a little bit of contamination inside a brand new tank. So if you use a tank to take refrigerant out of one system, and we're talking about unitary system, we're talking about like split systems on houses, residential or commercial. If you take refrigerant out of one system, it could go back into that one system. But if you are going to reuse the refrigerant, you want to put it into the tank filtered. And when you take it back out of this tank, you want to put it back into the same system through a filter. And that's the only way you just don't cover it out into a tank and then right back into uh, into the unit the next day otherwise the fine grinding materials and the slag and any particulate degree from metal processing where they cut this was a cut tank and it was welded together you have debris inside uh, from when they tap it and like you can see here the teflon or whatever tape they use to seal up pieces of that could be down in there so it could get sucked up through a straw and you can inject it into the system and you have stuff going down in, inside your system you don't want that so you can see we're already at 27 microns right now so that's because this is a clean dry tank well clean as in moisture free no oil uh, but there is debris and fresh metal so that's it guys I will see you and uh, we'll um, get back to this maybe i'll take a second video and show you how low this actually gets by tomorrow morning all right see you guys bye